God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. My beloved, please like us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and LinkedIn, and wherever you see us on social media. We have a great new series starting today. The title is The Desire of My Heart. Our scripture will be from the book of Romans, chapter 10, and verse 1, which reads as follows from the King James Version. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And the American Standard Version renders it. Brethren, my heart's desire and my supplication to God is for them, that they may be saved. Beloved, it should be, or rather must be, the desire of every true Christian. By that, I mean every born-again believer in Jesus Christ. The main thrust of the gospel is Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, which reads, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This verse is part of the Great Commission narrative containing the command to go, teach, and baptize new disciples with a Trinitarian formula, which means baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is not a suggestion by any means. This is a commandment. As true Christians, we are to go to the Jews and to the Greeks alike. Sorry to say, this is not being done according to the commandment of Jesus Christ. Many Christians would rather minister to other Christians than to the lost or to the Gentiles rather than the Jews. But beloved, my desire is to take the gospel to every creature, regardless of race, color, or creed. It should also be your desire. God gave me a desire to go to the Spanish-speaking nations, and I went, and God did marvelous things through our ministry. So let me ask you, what is your heart's desire? Be truthful in answering that question. My beloved, in our main verse today, Paul says, brethren, my heart's desire. This expression seems intended particularly for the Jews, his ancient friends, fellow worshipers, and kinsmen, but who had embraced the Christian faith. It is an expression of tenderness and affection, denoting his deep interest in their welfare. The word desire means benevolence, and the expression, my heart's desire, means my earnest and sincere wish. Paul speaks of prayer to God. He not only cherished this feeling, but he expressed in a desire to God. He had no desire that his kinsmen should be destroyed, no pleasure in the appalling doctrine which he had been defending. He still wished their welfare and could still pray for them that they might return to God. Ministers have no pleasure in proclaiming the truth that people must be lost, even when they declare the truths of the Bible that some will be lost, when they are constrained by the unbelief and wickedness of people who who proclaim it to them. They still can sincerely say that they seek their salvation. It speaks of for Israel, which means the Jewish nation, that they might be saved. This clearly refers to salvation from the sin of unbelief and the consequences of sin in hell. It does not refer to the temporal calamities which were coming upon them, but to preservation from the external anger of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, the apostle Paul wrote, Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The reasons why the apostle commences this chapter in this tender manner are the following, because he had stated and defended one of the most offensive doctrines that could be preached to a Jew, and he was desirous to show them that it was not from any lack of affection for them, but that he was urged to do it by the pressure of truth. The truth is that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. He was regarded by them as an apostate. He had abandoned them when bearing their commission, and while on his way to execute their favorite purposes, and had preached the doctrine which they had sent him to destroy. He was aware of the deep and dreadful condemnation that was coming on them. In view of all that, he expressed his tender regard for their welfare, and his earnest prayer to God for their salvation. Here are questions that are often asked, my beloved. What will happen to the Jewish people who believe in God, but not in Christ? Since they believe in the same God, won't they be saved? 
believe? My beloved, if only believing in God and not Jesus would bring salvation, then Paul would not have labored so hard and sacrificed so much to teach the Jews about Christ. Since Jesus Christ is the most complete revelation of God, and we cannot fully know God apart from Christ, and since God appointed Jesus Christ to bring God and man together, we cannot come to God by another path, or another door, or another way. The Jews, like everyone else, can find salvation only through Jesus Christ. John chapter 14 and verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the true and living way. No one comes to the Father but by me. That is from the Bible in basic English. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 says, And in no other is there salvation. For there is no other name under heaven given among men through which we may have salvation. That is from the Bible in basic English. As Christians, we are to pray for the Jewish people and in a loving manner share the gospel with them. Beloved, there is only one way to God and that is through Jesus Christ. I have a problem with those who advocate Christian universalism, which means that Christian universalism is a school of Christian theology focused around the doctrine of universal reconciliation. The view that all human beings will ultimately be saved and restored to a right relationship with God, which is false. It related to A, a theological doctrine that all human beings will eventually be saved. B, the principles and practices of a liberal Christian denomination found in the 18th century originally to uphold belief in universal salvation and now united with Unitarianism. My beloved, it is wrong, wrong, wrong. It is wrong because it focuses exclusively on God's love and mercy. It ignores his holiness, justice, and wrath. It also assumes that God's love depends on what he does for humanity rather than being a self-existing attribute of God present from eternity before man was ever created. Then we have the universalists, and they believe that nobody has a monopoly on the truth or ultimate proof of the truth of everything in any one belief. Therefore, one's own truth is unprovable, as is that of others. Consequently, my beloved, we should respect the beliefs of others as well as their right to hold those truths. That's what they believe, and it is wrong. Christian universalism continues as an influence within not only Unitarian universalism, but also Trinitarian universalism. My beloved, there has been high officials in the church that have joined the thought of Christian universalism and have led many people astray. Woe to them on Judgment Day. You see, Unitarianism rejects the mainstream Christian doctrine of the Trinity, or three persons in one, God, made up of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They typically believe that God is one being, God the Father, or Mother. Jesus is simply a man, not the incarnate deity. What a false teaching. Biblical Unitarianism encompasses the key doctrines of non-Trinitarian Christians who affirm the Bible as their sole authority and from it base their beliefs that God the Father is a singular being, the only one God, and that Jesus Christ is God's Son, but not divine. They are not true Christians, my beloved. Let's allow the scriptures to speak for themselves, okay? Let's go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It reads, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, that shalt be saved. That's the King James Version. Now, the God's Word Version renders it, if you declare that Jesus is Lord and believe that God brought him back to life, you will be saved. So let's talk about this for a moment. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, if a man shall make a good, sincere, and hearty confession to God before the church and the people of God and before the world that Christ is Lord and Savior, whom he desires to serve and to be saved by, and this is as arising from the comfortable experience of the grace of God in his soul and from the true faith in Christ in his heart, thou shalt be saved. The person shall be saved. And where it says, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, that shall be saved. This article of Christ's resurrection includes the several other articles of faith. It supposes his death, that supposes his life, and the obedience of it. And his life implies his being here on earth, and that his coming down from heaven to do the will of the Father. And this is the rather mentioned which is there ascribed to God the Father, though not to the exclusion of the Son and Spirit, because that Christ is risen again for justification, and which true faith is principally concerned, for such a faith is intended, not which lies in a mere assert 
to the truth of this or any other article of the Christian religion, but which is concerned with Christ for righteousness, life, and glory. And with such a faith, salvation is certainly and inseparably connected. My beloved, without believing in the Trinity, without believing in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as truth, without believing in the deity of Christ, you cannot have salvation. What do you believe today? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is deity, that he is part of the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that Jesus is divine? If you don't, you cannot have salvation. There is no other way to get to heaven but through Jesus Christ. So my beloved, my heart's desire is the same as the Apostle Paul's desire that not only will Israel be saved, but all mankind will be saved. That is going to conclude part one of the series. Next week, I will start with part two and Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. But before we close today, I want to offer you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you'd like to do that today, let me lead you in a prayer. Now, you must truly be sorry for your sins. You must truly repent. You must believe that Jesus Christ is truly divine, that he is the Savior of all mankind, and that he was crucified. He died, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day, that he ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of all power and all majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you want to believe this today and repent of your sins, please pray this prayer with me. Father God, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, the desire of my heart, from Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Thank you for this message today. Thank you for the preacher today for revealing truth to me concerning Jesus Christ as being your son and divine. I believe that he is the only way to heaven, that he is the savior of all mankind, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today, I confess this today, and I believe that through my true repentance, and my trusting in Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, that I have received salvation. And when I leave this life, I will go to heaven to be with Jesus Christ forever. And I thank you for saving me today, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My beloved, if you truly repented, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching teaching church, get an audience with a pastor or one of his staff elders, tell him what happened, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, teach you, lead you, and guide you in the new found faith in Jesus Christ. Ask him to give you a Bible if you haven't one. Then what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. I would love to hear from you. My beloved, please continue to follow us and please continue to pray for us. For it is our heart's desire to take the gospel not only to the Jews, but also to every pagan on the face of the earth. God bless you, my beloved, and thank you for joining us today. And please continue to follow this most important series. My message title has been, once again, The Desire of My Heart from Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Today, my love, is December 24th in the year 2023. I want to wish you, your loved ones, your friends, and your family a very Merry Christmas. And remember, Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. God bless you, my beloved, and walk with God.